In the last video, we looked at layer masks and saw how we can show or hide, we called it revealing and concealing, any part of a layer by adding a layer mask to it. Then we talked about how black and white determine which areas of a layer are revealed or concealed, and we used the rhyme, white reveals, black conceals, to help us remember this concept. Now that you have a good foundation of how layer masks work, in this video, we're going to see some other ways you can use layer masks to create some interesting effects. Let's go into Elements and get started. Let's begin with our familiar photo of my son Carl. This time, we're going to create a new layer by dragging the background layer onto the Create a New Layer icon. And it's going to create an exact copy of the background layer right above the original background layer in the Layers panel. Now we can use any kind of change we want on the duplicate layer and the original will remain safely intact on the background layer. Let's start with a popular technique where you can turn everything in your photo to black and white except for one area of your choice. And we can do that by going up to the Enhance menu and going down to Convert to Black and White. And we get this dialog box and I'm going to choose Vivid Landscapes and click OK. And now you can see that layer has gone completely to black and white. We'll add a layer mask by clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon in the Layers panel. Notice it adds a layer mask icon on the background copy layer represented by a white thumbnail to the right of our regular layer thumbnail. And notice that it has the black border around it indicating that it's the active thumbnail on that layer. Now choose the brush tool from the toolbox and make sure that your foreground color is set to black and if it's not, if it's set to white instead, remember we can press the letter X on our keyboard to switch between black and white in our foreground color. So once you have that all set up, then just take your brush and paint over the area that you want to be in color. And we can adjust our paintbrush again, the size of it with uh, the left and right bracket keys. And the thing that's nice about using a layer mask rather than using the eraser tool is you can see some of these areas I accidentally went too far and we got some of the background in there. Well, remember white reveals so I can just press X on my keyboard to switch to um, switch the foreground color to white so I'm painting with white and then I can go back over those areas and change them to black and white again. Let's look at another popular technique we can accomplish using layer masks. I call it the fake depth of field effect. I'm going to delete this layer by dragging it into the trash on the layers panel and then drag the background layer onto the create a new layer icon and we get a new layer above our background layer which is an exact copy just like we did in the last effect. This time, let's go up to the Filters menu and choose Blur and Gaussian Blur. You can adjust the slider to make your photo, or I should say your layer, more or less blurry. And for this example, I'm going to choose uh, about 3 pixel radius blur. Click OK. Now let's add a layer mask by clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon. And you know it's this circle inside of a square icon. Our goal this time is to bring Carl back into focus. And you know by now that we can do that by painting over him with black while having the layer mask active. But we want a gradual transition between what's in focus and what's blurry. We can accomplish that by using a soft edge brush. So first 
make sure you have your brush tool selected and then go up to the options bar and click on this brush preview and you'll see all the available brushes. There's a drop down menu that shows the brush sets. If you click on that, look for the one called basic brushes. Notice the different size brushes. The ones in the top area all have hard edges and the ones on the bottom have soft edges. We want a soft edge brush for this technique. I'll choose the 60 pixel size brush, but it doesn't really matter be because we can easily resize our brush by pressing the bracket keys. You can close this window by clicking on this little X here or by clicking anywhere in the options bar. Now just paint away and do your best to get a nice gradual transition from in focus to blurry. The bigger your brush, the more fade you will get. So I'm going to press my right bracket key to make my brush bigger. And then I'm just going to start painting away. And if I want to bring a little uh, of the fade back in closer, I can just switch from my foreground color from black to white by pressing the X key and then just kind of clicking around the edges there to soften that transition area a little more. Now this technique can be accomplished almost automatically with a new feature added to Photoshop Elements 10 but I thought it was helpful to illustrate how layer masks work. So there's a couple of quick basic examples of how you might use layer masks to achieve special effects. Experiment with these techniques and you'll get a good understanding of how layer masks work. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.